waves, primary or B waves, secondary or S waves, and long surface waves or L waves. The first two travel into the Earth's interior, while the last one on the surface. These waves travel at different velocities. Thus, they do not arrive at the seismic recording station at the same time. The farther the recording instrument is from the focus, the greater the difference in the arrival times of the first B wave compared to the first S wave. The difference in the arrival time will tell us the distance of the earthquake's focus from the seismic recording station. However, it does not tell in which direction it came from. If we have at least three recording stations that can tell how far away from them the earthquake occurred, the epicenter can be determined using the triangulation method. It uses distance information from three seismic stations to locate the epicenter of an earthquake. In order to locate the epicenter of an earthquake, we need to determine the time interval between the arrival of the P and S waves on the seismograms from at least three different stations. We have to measure the interval to the closest second and then use a formula or a graph to convert this interval to the epicenter distance. These distances are then scaled to match the size of the map used in triangulation. Once you have the epicenter distances, and draw circles to represent each distance on a map. The radius of each circle corresponds to the epicentral distance for each seismic recording station. Once you have drawn all three circles and located the point where, where all the three intersect, you will have successfully located or triangulated the epicenter of an earthquake.